Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 62 A Beautiful Woman Never had tertiary consort Li imagined things would blow up this big. When the prince had carried Yan out of Winter Plum Courtyard, her heart rose. Afterward, she couldn't feel happy anymore for Li Chen still had not summoned her over. Furthermore, she did not hear any news about the prince intending to move Yan to her residence. The next day, Fei Kui was dragged to the inner courtyard to be paddled. After she was beaten bloody, she was dragged out and tertiary consort Li paled with fright. Since the front doors to Winter Plum Courtyard were shut tightly, she made her way to Yulon Magnolia Courtyard. There, Consort Wei was drinking tea in a leisurely and comfortable manner. Tertiary Consort Li rushed toward her. Elder sister, what should I do? It seems His Highness knows everything now. Consort Wei said with indifference, Oh? What does His Highness know? In a flash, Tertiary Consort Li fell into a daze. Elder sister. Speaking of eldest miss, she indeed is pitiful. Her foster mother doesn't pity her and her birth mother isn't a compassionate person. Thankfully, from now on His Highness will take pity on eldest miss and personally bring her up. Such a thing could be considered fortunate. Anxiously, tertiary consort Lee said, Consort Wei, this is the plan you crafted for me. Consort Wei furrowed her brows. Did I force you to give Eldest Miss dirty things to eat? Did I force Eldest Miss to get sick like this? Younger Sister Li, you should be worrying about yourself right now. That servant girl is still alive, and you are the birth mother of Eldest Miss. Not to mention, His Highness has long since disliked you. At most, you will be put on house arrest. However, if you carelessly run your mouth like Princess Consort, I'm afraid you won't have a good conclusion. Tertiary Consort Li did not know how recklessly the Princess Consort had spoken. At present, Consort Wei's words frightened her. For a moment, she did not know what to do. Consort Wei said, It's better if you don't keep walking around outside. Otherwise, you might offend His Highness again. Tertiary Consort Li muttered, If His Highness really puts me on house arrest. A smile spread across Consort Wei's lips. Although a daughter the prince personally brings up can't be considered a princess of the first rank, her identity won't lose out to those of second miss and third miss. Younger sister can be considered to have benefited from a setback. Absent-minded, tertiary Consort Li returned to her residence while Consort Wei laughed grimly. What a fool! However, her goal had been achieved and it was even better than she had expected. Originally, Consort Wei wanted to make the prince unhappy with the princess consort due to her unsatisfactory supervision of an illegitimate daughter. Who would have expected that the princess consort to make a huge uproar in Winter Plum Courtyard? The prince almost hit her too. Consort Wei practically couldn't be more satisfied. Currently in the prince estate, the princess consort had suffered a sudden and devastating decline. She didn't have a son either. Not to mention, Consort Ji was an idiot, unable to make any big waves. Better yet, Ji Yunruo was a man. The smile on Consort Wei's lips was incomparable in its joy. In this life, she must become the prince's main consort. Even if she did not have that man's favor. Even if it was merely by name, she still wanted to become the main consort, the princess consort, the empress. Within the prince estate, Tertiary Consort Li grew completely silent, so much so that she seemed to have vanished. Deep in the inner courtyard, a small Buddhist temple was built. Li Chen hated her more than he hated that servant girl. No matter the reason, a mother must not harm her own child. This was Li Chen's bottom line, the thing he couldn't tolerate the most. However, what he hated the most was this, since this woman was the mother of his child he could not kill her. He could only make it so that he would never see her again, and that she would never see Yanner again. Yanner grew better by the day. In these few days, Li Chen slept with Qi Yunruo in the western wing. Once Yanner was all recovered, Li Chen started to arrange for her a more permanent move to Ink Lotus Courtyard. Smiling, Yanner said, Will I be living here from now on? 
Li Chen nodded. Does Yanner like it? Yes. Yanner had lived in Winter Plum Courtyard in recent years. Compared to others, she was able to read people better. At such a young age, she already knew how to read people's expressions. Li Chen felt heartbroken, and afterward, blamed himself immensely. Dropping to a crouch, Qi Yunruo looked at Yanner. I'll bring you to see your new clothes and jewelry, all right. Yanner's eyes brightened. All right. Qi Yunruo held her hand. As they walked, he said, Yanner, you are now a master of Ink Lotus Courtyard. If there's anything you want to play with or just want, let the older female servants know. It can be anything. Jinger said, I want to play with younger sister. Yanner sized up her brother. Qi Yunruo smiled and said, Jinger, you must take care of your younger sister. Jinger rushed to another side. Holding Yanner's other hand, he said, Later, come to my room. If there's anything you want, I can give it to you. For some reason, Qi Yunruo found the scheme that harmed Yanner familiar. Regarding the matter that had involved Muir and Jinger, Qi Yunruo understood what happened even without carefully investigating it. Consort Wei had inserted some spies by Jinger's side to tell him that his younger brother was very adorable and very fun to play with. With Jinger's childish temperament, he made for his younger brother at once. And the servant girl, who attended by Muir's side, placed Muir on the bed. At that height, Jinger could reach him if he extended his arms. Once he had his younger brother in his arms, he dropped Muir to the ground. However, there was a thick carpet. Nothing happened to Muir but a large argument sparked, alarming the prince. Later on, those servant girls and other servants were dealt with. And Li Chen knew well exactly what had happened. But was tertiary consort Li that smart? Qi Yunruo had heard the prince speak of past matters. Tertiary consort Li had leaked news from the prince estate because she thought the prince and the empress were very close. If it weren't for the fact that back then, she had just given birth to a child, Li Chen would have already killed her. From what a few maidservants had said, tertiary consort Li indeed had been close to consort Wei lately. Li Chen grew heartbroken because of this matter. Qi Yunruo did not mention his own deductions to him. Rather, he prepared to investigate the matter thoroughly himself. After all, he was the prince estate's adjutant. As such, this was his duty. Currently, the problem with the highest priority was Qi Nikan. No matter how he pondered, he could not figure out a way to deal with her. Right now, Qi Yunruo was in no rush to take back his belongings. What worried him was for the prince's near slapping of the princess consort to spread in public. Therefore, he summoned the supervisory older female servants from each courtyard and instructed them one by one. However, good deeds were never known, yet bad deeds spread far and wide. Rumors of Prince Chun and Princess Consort Chun not getting along spread in the marketplace, giving Qi Yunruo the impression that some of the servants were not loyal to the prince estate. This conjecture frightened Qi Yunruo. He furrowed his brows tightly. Deeply worried, gloomy and sad, he paced about in his room. Once Li Chen returned to court, the people of the Ministry of Revenue and the Ministry of War treated him well. In their minds, he had finally achieved what ought to be his after persevering for so long. However, there were also those who believed there was no smoke without fire, the so-called the dead were washed clean, and once someone died, they could not speak for themselves. It seemed Li Chen was not aware of these words. He stood calmly at the palace hall where court was being held. No matter what the high-ranking ministers thought, they must respect him. For he was the eldest imperial prince from the legitimate line, and still the most likely person to be conferred the position of crown prince. During court session, the emperor said, Prince Chun. Sun official is here. The emperor nodded, you gave the western owl and seeking eye tribes to Suzhou but the provincial governor of Suzhou has a hard time governing these two tribes. You proposed to restrain these warlike tribes, mentioned teaching them the principles of the golden mean. However, each member of the two tribes are rude and unreasonable. 
they even killed the scholars that the court dispatched there. Coldly, Li Chen said, if they killed someone, they must pay with their lives. The emperor said, the provincial governor of Suza requested for troops to suppress them. What do the court ministers suggest? Ji Han Song stepped forward. At present, General Zhao is monitoring the movements in Zenyuan country. He is also supervising the restructuring of the remaining six tribes and the royal capital of the Jiang. He's too busy to divert his energy to this. This subject believes the court should dispatch a wise person. Not only must the military advance to intimidate those two tribes, we must also send civil officials to assimilate them. The Minister of Revenue, Cheng Wenjia, said, this subject seconds the motion. Li Chen could pick up the emperor's slight discontent toward himself. The emperor looked down on the different tribes from the border. He thought that, rather than using so much energy to subdue those two tribes and make them obedient, it was better to let Buahgur deal with them himself. Li Chen said, if these two tribes are still under the Qiang's administration, they might get in touch with the other six tribes and rebel. Only when we constantly monitor them would we have nothing to worry about. In the future, we can send strong troops to watch over them. All of a sudden, Prince Ching said, Sun official is willing to lead troops to guard that area. The entire court burst into uproar. However, the emperor who sat in the highest position smiled and nodded. Continue speaking. Sun official is willing to go to those two tribes with troops, and force them into complete submission. May Imperial Father grant Sun Official half a year's worth of time. Sun Official will have them bow before us. The Emperor tapped his fingers on the armrests of his seat. What do you all think? Those of Noble Consort Yuan's faction said, Prince Ching's words are correct. This subject thinks His Highness' identity is noble and has more authority than the generals. Before the Qiang, he can display our great king's might. Let them see the courage of our great king's imperial princes. This subject also thinks His Highness Prince Qing is the most suitable person for this task. Not a word left Li Chen's lips. However, Prince Jing hesitated for a moment. Just as he was about to speak, he heard someone say loudly, Sun official is willing to leave with third brother. It was fourth prince, Prince Yang. Prince Yang stepped forward. Like what Sir Ji said, to subdue these two tribes, not only is threatening them with military force enough. We must also teach them our culture. Sun official is not as skilled in martial arts as second brother and third brother. However, Sun official is very skilled in the literary arts. There are also many masters of the Han classics in my estate. Sun official is willing to bring them to Suzhou and make known the principles of our ancient codes and records. To achieve another glorious and unparalleled deed for the great state of Kong. With much discontent, Prince Qing looked at him. However, the emperor sighed heavily and said, Approved. We will dispatch you two brothers as imperial envoys to Suzhou. Sun official thanks imperial father, said Prince Yang, Li Su, enjoy. Yet Prince Qing could only say, Sun official will not disappoint. On Li Chen's path out of the palace, Prince Jing approached him. In the future, people will only praise third brother and fourth brother for your great contributions. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips. What great contributions! What praise! Although we are imperial princes, we are also subjects of the great state of Kong. These are all the great contributions of great Kong. Taking his time, Prince Jing said, since the start, third brother wanted to achieve meritorious deeds. Who would have thought fourth brother was the same? Fourth brother is your full-blooded brother too. Isn't it because we are full-blooded brothers that it doesn't matter who renders meritorious service, said Li Chen. Prince Jing smiled and left first. Li Chen clasped his hands behind his back. With a relaxed expression, he made for the Yaman. What Prince Ching had snatched was merely a hard bone, under the impression that it was a juicy piece of meat. Half a year. Half a year. Li Chen clicked his tongue. He actually dared to say that. As for his fourth brother. 
Li Chen's expression grew dark. He and this younger brother rarely interacted. Said younger brother was also close to the Empress. For a moment, Li Chen felt very much like he was alone in this world but this feeling disappeared in an instant. At present, he had five children. Jing Er was lively. Yan Er was bright and beautiful. And there was also Little Qi. Little Qi. When Li Chen returned to his estate, he learned that the princess consort had invited him to her courtyard. Many days had passed since that previous affair. And Li Chen had not taken one step into Winter Plum Courtyard since then. He had already dealt with tertiary consort Li, yet had not done anything to the princess consort. Today, things had been very busy at the Ministry of Revenue. By the time Li Chen had returned to the estate, it was already the evening. Qi Yunruo said, it seems like Princess Consort wants to share the evening meal with you. He helped Li Chen change clothes. Your honored self doesn't need to come back here for dinner. I will eat by myself. Li Chen pinched his cheek and dismissed the maid servants. Then he leaned close to his ear and said, You're not jealous. What are you saying? Red painted Qi Yunruo's cheeks. He gently pushed Li Chen toward the outside. Your Highness, no matter what Princess Consort says, your honored self mustn't get angry. Why would I be angry? Li Chen adjusted his belt. He lightly patted his cheeks and said, You can go eat with the two children. I, all right. With a kiss and a smile, Li Chen finally stepped foot out of the room. Qi Yunruo stood still for a moment then he rubbed at his cheeks. Then he shook his head hard. He left the door instructing the servants to bring the dishes into the room, and to tell Jing Er and Yan Er to come and eat together. Although Li Chen told Qi Yunruo he wouldn't get angry, he assumed he still would. As a result, he did not bring any attendants with him on his way to Winter Plum Courtyard. After all, she was the princess consort. He had to give her some face. He reached her residence alone. The meal was already set up at Qi Nikan's side. At the front doors, she curtsied. This concubine pays respects to your highness. Nodding, Li Chen said, Princess consort may rise. Qi Nikan did so, smiling in a gentle manner. She personally invited Li Chen to sit. He noticed that she wore a plain dress, and had on elegant and light makeup. Her hair was arranged in a lily bun, with three small and exquisite hairpins. Chi Nikan handed him a cup. Your Highness, here. Sit down. Just have the servants do something like this. Chi Nikan took a seat by Li Chen's side. She took the initiative to toast him. This first cup is this concubine's humble apology toward Your Highness. This concubine was negligent toward Yan Er and caused her to be wronged. Such is this concubine's fault. Li Chen drank the whole cup. Chi Nikan started another toast. The second cup is to continue to accept my wrongs. That day, this concubine had spoken irresponsibly and did not repent. Furthermore, this concubine had harmed third brother. May your highness please forgive me. This time, Li Chen hesitated. But he still drank the whole cup in the end. The third cup is to show respect for your highness. We are husband and wife yet we fall into conflict time and time again. Attending to your highness is this concubine's duty. This cup is in hopes that we will repair our relationship. Li Chen picked up the cup, slowly drinking it. A smile bloomed on Qi Nikan's lips. She officially invited him to partake in their meals, and a while later, she left the room. Li Yufang was waiting for her outside, holding a bowl of medicine. Furrowing her brows, Chi Nikan raised it and drank it in one gulp. Some of the black medicine trickled down her lips. Expressionless, she wiped her lips clean. Has it been prepared? Li Yufang nodded, yet said with worry, Princess Consort, your honored self should think it over again. If His Highness finds out. But Chi Nikan only sneered. How could a man actually have the personal integrity to stay pure for someone? Once I'm pregnant and His Highness has a son from the legitimate line, 
there's no way he would try to settle this account with me. But, said Li Yu Feng. This kind of strong aphrodisiac would harm the body. This slave thinks that His Highness already treats your honored self a lot better now. He did not bring up eldest Miss and Chi Yunruo's matters. There's no need to do this. Cold as ice, Chi Nikan said, it's all fake. The prince is full of vigilance against me. I already humbled myself to him, yet he hesitated many times just for one cup of wine. He will not take the initiative to stay here for a meal. Li Yufang realized she wouldn't be able to change her mind, and could only nod. Then in a little while, this slave will have all the servants leave. And this slave will light some incense. Chi Nikan nodded. She returned to the room and continued to wait on Li Chen as he ate. She could clearly sense that Li Chen was preoccupied. Inwardly, Chi Nikan was angry and sneering. Could it be that the prince truly loved Chi Yunruo, that little slut? What a joke! Even his mother, who had been a famous courtesan, was unable to keep her father's heart. What ability did Chi Yunruo, a man, possess to make the prince truly love him? However, since he thought he had the prince's love, she'd have him see. Men could not be trusted. As such, Chi Nikan felt carefree. She imagined the scene of the next day, imagined Chi Yunruo's appearance at that time. He would definitely shed crocodile tears, pretending to be in so much pain as to not want to live, and inspire the prince's pity. This slut. While he had lived in Winter Plum Courtyard, he had already learned how to seduce men. He made the prince take the initiative to help him move out, made the prince bring him to the northwest, made the prince appoint him as an official. Slut. Slut. After three cups of wine, Li Chen felt he had enough, blocking the fourth cup from the Chi Nikan. Smiling, he said, no need. I'll just eat a bit more. Chi Nikan smiled and glanced at Li Yu Fang. Li Yu Fang nodded and walked to the incense burner. She poured a package of something inside. Then she softly mixed the contents with the incense powder using a little rake. Hands shaking, she closed the lid again. She turned around and saw that the prince and princess consort had already finished their meals. Thus, Li Yufang brought some other servants to clear the plates and eating utensils, then left the room, traveling far away from it. Chi Nikan glanced at the incense burner, before personally bringing a basin of water for Li Chen to wash his hands. Without a care, he dipped his hands into the water. He also rinsed his mouth. The moment he was about to say he would return to the forecourt, something felt off. Li Chen lifted his head and looked at Chi Nikan. Chi Nikan put away the basin of water. Forced herself to stay calm. Your Highness, it's already late. How about you stay here for the night? Li Chen stared at her in silence. She rose to her feet. Following that, she lifted open the curtain facing the bedroom. She curtsied and said, After you, Your Highness. Li Chen stood and scanned the room. In the end, his gaze fell upon the exquisite incense burner on top of a shelf. He closed his eyes and calmed his breathing and he turned around to leave. Frightened, Chi Nikan yelled without thinking, Shut the front doors. Once the people outside heard her words, they stood there at a loss, staring blankly. A moment later, a little eunuch rushed over to Winter Plum Courtyard's front doors. Li Chen turned to Chi Nikan at once. However, she threw herself over to him and held him. Her breathing a mess, she said, This concubine is your highness' wife. This concubine asks for your highness to stay overnight. Don't be this shameless, princess consort, Li Chen coldly said. Chi Nikan released him. In a few steps, she ran to the door, blocking it. She screamed, Your Highness. You don't have the right to blame me. I am your wife. I must give birth to a legitimate son for you. She seemed to have found a reason for her actions. Your Highness, even Princess Consort Ching has just become with child. Princess Consort Ching will give birth in a few months. This concubine must have a legitimate son. 
but your honored self also needs one. This prince does not. Chi Nikan looked at him with a frantic gaze. Your Highness. You can't treat me like this. I must have a son. Or else I'll be, or else I'll be. Your Highness. She calmed down. Even if you want to blame me in the future, I won't regret it. You cannot leave. Heat spread through Li Chen's entire body and his arms and legs grew weak. He watched with his eyes wide as Chi Nikan approached him and took off her own clothes. Leaning against him, she softly said, Your Highness mustn't blame me. I want to help you give birth to a son. Li Chen closed his eyes, and joy sprang in Chi Nikan's heart but in the next moment, he kicked her. Chi Nikan held her stomach as she was sent flying far away. Quickly, Li Chen went to open the door. Although Chi Nikan's face was full of pain, unfortunately, her mind was completely clear. Today was her only chance. In the future, the prince would hate her even more, would detest her even more. She had taken nourishing medicine for many months and had researched to find the best days to conceive. Today, she must not allow the prince to leave. Your Highness. Chi Nikan rose to her feet frantically. She ran toward him to tear apart his clothes. That aphrodisiac was very potent. Li Chen had exhausted all his efforts to maintain his clarity of thought until now. So much so that he didn't have the energy to resist a woman. He pulled his collar close together as much as he could. But in a deranged manner, Chi Nikan dragged him toward the bedroom. For a moment, Li Chen's every hope turned into dust. He loved little Chi. Little Chi was worth staying pure for. Little Chi gave all his love to him, gave all of his support and wisdom to him. Little Chi. Chi Yunruo's face flashed before his eyes, and Li Chen's mind cleared a bit. Then he pulled Chi Nikan closer by her collar to slap her. At that moment, Li Chen heard the sound of someone trying to bash open a door. It seemed to come from very far away, yet also seemed to come from somewhere very close. Li Chen focused. Made to open the door to the room he was currently residing in. Sure enough, he could hear a loud banging at the front doors of Winter Plum Courtyard. A few servant girls noticed Li Chen standing by the door with his clothes in disarray. They knelt together. One step after the other, Li Chen made his way to the outside, and the Qi Yunruo outside finally got the front doors open. His breathing was rough. The moment he caught sight of Li Chen, he rushed his way. A smile spread across Li Chen's lips. Qi Yunruo had merely gone to hug him, yet Li Chen fell to the ground from the force of this action. Your Highness! Your Highness! Qi Yunruo hurried to check if he was injured. Let's return, said Li Chen. To which Qi Yunruo nodded in a frantic manner. All right, I will bring you back home. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 63 Night of Desire Once Qi Yunruo supported Li Chen to his feet, Li Chen leaned against him. Following that, Qi Yunruo glanced back at the sorry-looking Qi Nikan. Hatred and abhorrence filled her gaze. He turned back around. Under the fearful gazes of Winter Plum Courtyard's servants, he supported the prince toward the exit. After they were outside, he shouted to some idle maidservants and eunuchs, hurry up and bring a sedan over. Li Chen's breathing proved hurried and fervent. Yet he could actually smile as he looked at Qi Yunruo. Why are you here? At the sound of those words, Qi Yunruo's expression grew dark. He supported him up the sedan. Li Chen faced upward painfully. Should we call for an imperial physician, asked Qi Yunruo. Don't let other people witness this joke. Li Chen closed his eyes. He pulled Qi Yunruo closer to his side. Just having you is enough. Qi Yunruo blushed and nodded. Once again, Li Chen asked, why did you come? Qi Yunruo did not respond from start to finish. He only continued to wipe away Li Chen's sweat to help adjust his clothes. He also used his own hand to fan Li Chen. Very soon, the sedan reached Ink Lotus Courtyard. 
Qi Yunruo ordered people not to let Jing Er or Yan Er come outside. Then he brought Li Chen to the bedroom. The next day, when Li Chen woke up, his head felt like it was splitting. He turned his body to look at Qi Yunruo, who was still asleep. Qi Yunruo's face was slightly pale. Under the quilt, Li Chen found his hand and squeezed it once tightly. Then, Li Chen lay there for a while, before getting up and putting on his clothes. There were red marks trailing down his neck and below, the rest hidden by what he wore. Li Chen put on his outer robe by himself and made his way toward the door, opening it. On the other side of the door, Su Ji said softly, This slave has already informed the palace that your honored self will be taking a sick leave. Li Chen nodded. He sat down on a chair. He massaged his forehead and did not eat breakfast. Rather, he returned to his bedroom to take a look at Little Chi, then headed directly for the inner courtyard. Last night, Chi Yunruo didn't actually have any reason as for why he had headed to Winter Plum Courtyard. Li Chen had asked him about this once the former had grown sober. He can only recall that after he and the two children had finished eating the evening meal together, he waited for Li Chen inside as he read. However, no matter how long he had waited, Li Chen did not return. Following that, Qi Yunruo felt flustered but a few maidservants and eunuchs had on strange expressions. They felt that Qi Yunruo was being too excessive. The prince and princess consort were husband and wife. Wasn't it very normal for the prince to stay overnight at the princess consort's residence? Despite this, Qi Yunruo had found such a thing impossible. A few days ago, Qi Nikan was just like a crazy shrew. The prince already hated her. Even if Qi Nikan apologized that night, the prince would still be cautious. At present, he did not have any reason to stay overnight at Winter Plum Courtyard. Furthermore, Qi Yunruo felt deep within his heart that the prince would definitely not do this. The one the prince loved was himself. As such, he would return. And so, Qi Yunruo had decided to take a look at the inner courtyard. However, even the Lulan by his side had a difficult expression as she said, Sir, this, one fear this is inappropriate. If His Highness and Her Highness are already asleep. It's true that His Highness likes you, but to have a reputation of being jealous, said Luxuan. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet and said, Ice cold, then I'll just go there myself. If he wanted to go, no one would dare to stop him. However, in their opinion, this adjutant Qi was normally gentle, yet was now this arrogant and despotic. He did not even allow the prince to sleep over at his main consort's residence. Most likely, the prince would spurn him soon. Qi Yunruo headed for the inner courtyard in large strides. The prince estate was brightly lit. Later, he broke into a run toward Winter Plum Courtyard, which had its front doors shut early. Without thinking much, he went to knock. But no one responded. In fact, if a servant at that time had dared to say the prince and princess consort were sleeping, Qi Yunruo wouldn't be able to do anything. However, there had not been any response, which caused him to grow even more suspicious. As he smacked the door hard, he said angrily, hurry and open the door. Do you not know who I am? Qi Yunruo smacked the door until his hands were swollen. At the end, he both smacked and kicked it. Finally, the little eunuch guarding the door grew scared to his limit and opened the door for him. Who would have known that as soon as Qi Yunruo had stepped foot within, he would see a sight that made him furious to the point of exploding. The prince staggered yet was steadily heading toward the exit. One glance, and Qi Yunruo could tell that something bad had happened here. The prince looked too much in a sorry state. Qi Yunruo rushed over to him, knocking him over at once. In that moment, Qi Yunruo could not discern his own emotions. Afterward, he only felt lucky and glad that he had made it in time. Li Chen had made love to Qi Yunruo the whole night. Right before he fell asleep, he had said in a soft voice, Your Highness, Princess Consort is still your wife in the end. Li Chen placed Qi Yunruo's head on his chest and kissed the latter's hair. Go to sleep. Don't think too much. 
and Chi Yunruo finally fell unconscious. Back in the present, Li Chen made his way in front of Winter Plum Courtyard. Chi Yunruo's footprints were no longer visible on the front doors. He slowly entered the residence, and once he arrived at the main wing, he said in a dull manner, Open the door. The maidservants at the side rushed to heed his command. Li Chen saw that Chi Nikan was still wearing what she had worn last night. However, her clothes had been tidied up, and there was nothing disorderly about them. She sat in the seat of honor, staring ahead in an elegant and dignified manner. The derangement of last night was nowhere in sight. Li Chen waved, signaling for everyone to leave. Chi Nikan sat there in silence. Li Chen scanned his surroundings and noticed that the incense burner from last night was missing. He approached her. Bent down to ask her, Princess Consort, do you still think you did nothing wrong, and that others were at fault? Coldly, Chi Nikan replied, I've done nothing wrong from the start. I'm your wife. But you rather favor men. First it was Ji Huan. After that, it was Chi Yunruo. It's you who's corrupting proper relationships. You're the one who forced me to this point. Li Chen stood straighter. Took a deep breath. Everything you do is right. You can play with people's lives as you wish but won't allow others to step on you. Princess Consort, do you know that after you married over, this prince knows everything you've said and done? Chi Nikan fell into a daze. In a flash, she snapped back to her senses. Nanny Cheng. The moment you entered the estate, you wanted to seize power. There's nothing wrong with that since you are the main consort in this prince estate. However, you wanted to take this prince's eldest son in order to suppress consort Ji. This prince likes little Chi, yet you colluded with consort Ji to kill him. That was why this prince brought little Chi away to the northwest. It wasn't because he bewitched me. Chi Nikan lowered her head evading his gaze. At the northwest, Little Chi went through danger twice for this prince. Each time, he almost lost his life. Once he returned to the capital, Little Chi helped this prince solve the case regarding Si Di. Yet, you only know how to fight and scheme every day, and harm this prince's descendants. Now, you still think you're not at fault at all, and that it's this prince and Little Chi who are in the wrong. Your Highness, said Chi Nikan, shaking. But I just want to be your wife. I want to give birth to a legitimate son for you. I'm just jealous. Li Chen's gaze was filled with pity. Do you want to give birth to a legitimate son for this prince, or is it that you think you must have a son by your side? Chi Nikan was speechless. Li Chen said, last night when you toasted me, this prince thought if you sincerely reformed yourself. This prince would still respect you deeply as my main consort. Little Chi would always be below you in status. But because of your greed for a son, you drugged this prince. A sigh left Li Chen's lips. You, you all just treat this prince as a tool to have a steady position in the harem. You all treat this prince like a fool. So why should this prince like any of you? Chi Nikan stared blankly at him. When Li Chen turned around to leave, she finally felt regret. Remorse swallowed her whole as she threw herself at him, sobbing. I know, I'm in the wrong. Please forgive me. Please give me one more chance. It's too late. I already found little Chi. I'll never give another chance to anyone else in this life. Chi Nikan kneeled on the ground in a lifeless manner, watching as the back figure of Li Chen grew farther and farther. All of a sudden, she laughed. I get it now but too bad the others still don't understand. Ha 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 she laughed until she cried. That group of fools. They wouldn't understand. Chi Yunruo, I lost to you. It was only until the afternoon that Chi Yunruo roused. He opened his eyes and rolled over. He felt sore all over. All of a sudden, a thought entered his mind and he sat up at once. Chi Yunruo couldn't help but groan. Originally, Li Chen was reading documents in the same room far away but after hearing that noise, he approached Chi Yunruo and frowned. Why did you wake up so early? 
Chi Yunruo blurted, Your Highness. Did your honored self go to the inner courtyard? How is Princess Consort? Without batting an eyelid, Li Chen pulled the other party's inner garment closer together, hiding the marks from last night. He slowly said, It's been settled. His tone had been normal as he spoke. But Chi Yunruo understood what he meant, muttering, Your honored self solved it alone, didn't you? Li Chen covered him with blankets. It's still early. Get up later, and when you do, have dinner. So it's already this late, Chi Yunruo remembered that he had official business to attend to. He wanted to get up but Li Chen stopped him. It's not a big deal or could it be that this prince's words cannot compare to those of a little adjutant like you? As such, Chi Yunruo didn't try to get up again. Smiling, he lay down. Li Chen sat by the side of the bed and stroked his cheek. In a low voice, he said, Does it still hurt? Chi Yunruo pulled the blankets up, covering his head. Not a word left his lips. From beyond the blankets, he heard Li Chen's low laughter. I won't tease you anymore. For dinner, we will have what you like to eat, crunchy radish, pickles, and black non-glutinous rice congee with honey. At the sound of those words, Chi Yunruo revealed his eyes from the blankets. Those are all very good. M.M. Afterward, Chi Yunruo noticed that Li Chen had the records of the Prince Estate's storehouse. He couldn't help but ask, which family is having a happy occasion? In a few days, Prince Qing and Prince Yang are leaving the capital, said Li Chen. My brothers discussed arranging a banquet for them. So, I'm looking for a few items to send to them as gifts. Frowning, Chi Yunruo asked, where are they going? Li Chen took his time saying, they're going to Suzhou to strive for meritorious service. They think they can effortlessly suppress the Qiang's bravest and fiercest western owl and seeking eye tribes. A smile graced Qi Yunruo's lips. A moment later, he sat up and put on his clothes. However, his legs were still a bit weak. Still, he did not allow Li Chen to support him, leaving the room himself. Following that, he sat down and had his meal. Chi Yunruo felt ravenous. By the time he realized he had not eaten all day until then, he was already finished eating. He had drunk two bowls of thick kanji. Chi Yunruo said, I can't just stay all day inside doing nothing. Right now, it's neither cold nor hot outside. It's the best time to take a stroll. You've slept too much so now you don't feel like sleeping anymore. Li Chen had said this yet brought Chi Yunruo outside anyway. The scene last night, when he had returned with Li Chen, proved frightening. Chi Yunruo noticed the somewhat awkward expressions of Luxuan and Lulan. They were probably feeling awkward about what had happened last night but Chi Yunruo did not really mind. The past was the past, and settling accounts with them was unnecessary. The next day, when Li Chen was about to leave for morning court, he told Chi Yunruo he would be attending the banquet at a restaurant in the evening, and that he would return home late. That he didn't have to wait for him. Chi Yunruo intended to tidy up the inner courtyard. He did not want any type of news from the prince estate to reach the outside. Those who could come in and out of the estate were the stewards with status. As such, he could not be too excessive with his words, and merely repeated that if anyone dared to leak news from the prince estate, he would not let them off. Three days later, Prince Qing and Prince Yang left the capital. This resembled a signal for all the powers in the capital to target Li Chen. Therefore, Qi Yunruo's hard work had all been in vain. The civil officials of the Imperial Censorate and Hanlin Academy seemed to be having a field day, censuring Li Chen for having a disorderly inner courtyard, for favoring the crafty and the funning. They accused him of all sorts of things that they were furious of how much of a philanderer he was. After Princess Consort Chun had argued with him, he slapped her on the face. They also said that since the start, Prince Chun favored his concubines and disrespected his main consort. Still others said it was actually Chi Yunruo and the Princess Consort who had fought, and Prince Chun defended Chi Yunruo. 
he did not allow the princess consort to approach Chi Yunruo, and even placed her on house arrest. The moment Chi Yunruo learned of this, he received a message from a palace eunuch, he was being summoned to the imperial palace. The prince was not around, so Chi Yunruo didn't know what to do. He was so anxious, he kept pacing around the room. Seeing this, Suji said, Right now, His Highness is still in the palace, so Sir shouldn't be afraid. Sir just needs to enter the palace. However, His Majesty, that is the Emperor, Chi Yunruo felt alarmed and helpless. He sat down and asked, What if His Majesty actually believes their words? Suji said, But your honored self mustn't defy an imperial decree. With a bitter expression, Chi Yunruo went to change into his official robes. Then he followed the messenger eunuch to the palace. Before they left, Suji gave the messenger a bulging pouch of money. A smile on his face, he asked, What's the reason for the summon? We only serve on the outside, and do not know the emperor's intention. Chi Yunruo followed the two to a sedan and sat on it. He was in a perturbed state of mind. A sixth-rank official working for an imperial prince like him did not have the privilege to enter the court. As such, Chi Yunruo had thought he would not have the opportunity to see the emperor. Who would have expected that he would enter the palace today with a fully blackened name? Chi Yunruo disembarked from his sedan at the gates of the palace. The path ahead required him to walk on his own feet. At present, the emperor was situated at Marshal Hero Hall. He didn't know where the prince was. On the way there, he did not encounter many people. However, in front of Marshal Hero Hall, he saw Great Scholar Wen just as he was exiting. Great Scholar Wen glanced at him in contempt and made a sound of annoyance. Chi Yunruo furrowed his brows, extremely unwilling to deal with this old fool. However, Great Scholar Wen approached him with his hands clasped behind his back. He took his time to say, since ancient times, using flattery for favor would never bring forth a good outcome. Prince Chun originally could have been a wise ruler who had skill in governing a country. What a pity, what a pity. This time, is Great Scholar Wen fully displaying your capabilities, asked Chi Yunruo. Great Scholar Wen threw his sleeve. I dare to criticize directly. It's originally the duty of us officials. Chi Yunruo sighed. This time, what kind of evidence did you find? Without thinking, Great Scholar Wen replied, Everyone says, all of a sudden, he no longer spoke. Chi Yunruo laughed grimly. A court eunuch left the palace and said, Sir Chi, His Majesty has summoned you inside. Thank you, Gong Gong, said Chi Yunruo. Following that, he bowed and made his way into the palace hall. His heart thrashed against his chest. He was basically too afraid to raise his head. After taking a few steps inside, he dropped to a kneel and cowed out. This humble servant, Chi Yunruo, pays respects to the emperor. Long live your majesty. Voice traveling from far away, the emperor grunted his acknowledgement. You may rise. Chi Yunruo rose to his feet. Then he heard the emperor say, Come closer. At this moment, Chi Yunruo realized that he was standing too far away. Head lowered, he took a few steps forward. Then the emperor said, Raise your head. Chi Yunruo did as told. Then, he saw a man dressed in a set of bright yellow dragon robes on the throne. He appeared over fifty years old, grey peppering his hair. His facial features were imposing, yet his tone was unexpectedly very gentle. Your name is Chi Yunruo. Chi Yunruo nodded. The emperor nodded as well. Chi Yunruo thought about past events, then gritted his teeth, no longer letting his mind wander to those things. Despite this, the emperor said, M.M., you resemble your mother. Chi Yunruo fell silent for a good while, before saying, People have indeed said this before. Wrong, Sunny Yang, right. The emperor smiled. Chi Yunruo looked up again. He knew that the emperor was Xia House's backing. As such, it had been able to maintain its status above its peers for a few decades. 
and that was the reason his mother had been acquainted with the emperor. But the emperor did not continue on this topic. He gave Chi Yunruo a few memorials to look at. Expression still normal, he said, these are the memorials censuring Prince Chun and yourself. Kneeling, Chi Yunruo replied, Your Majesty, ever since His Highness Prince Chun left for the Northwest region, these types of attacks have never ceased. His Highness was surrounded by perils at the Northwest, yet now, these totally oblivious civil officials are attacking him. A few days ago in the Prince estate, His Highness and Princess Consort have in fact quarreled. However, they have already come to an agreement. The rumor about Princess Consort being detained is complete nonsense, and the rumors about His Highness favoring the concubine yet disrespecting the wife are lies. What about you? asked the Emperor with indifference. Chi Yunruo fell into a daze. Once he realized the Emperor's meaning, he lowered his head. Your Majesty, this humble servant and Prince Chun. We. Emperor said a woman with a warm and generous voice from outside the palace hall. The court eunuchs opened the door. An old woman with a head full of white hair stepped foot within, two gugus supporting her. The emperor rushed to stand from the throne. He gave a half bow. Why has imperial mother come? Empress Dowager Lan smiled. She glanced at the kneeling Chi Yunruo. The emperor also smiled. Could it be that Chen'er brought you? the supporting troops, over. Empress Dowager walked as she said, that's not it. From the very beginning, this grieving one has wanted to meet Chen'er's sweetheart, yet never had the chance. After hearing that you would summon him to the palace today, this grieving one came to join in the excitement. For Empress Dowager Lan to say this so directly, the Emperor could not continue questioning Chi Yunruo anymore. Empress Dowager Lan sat down. She smiled as she waved. Good child, stand and come closer to give this grieving one a better look. Chi Yunruo did as told. Empress Dowager Lan's gentle gaze swept through him. She turned to the emperor and said, Does emperor know that this child achieved many meritorious deeds in the northwest? The emperor fell silent for a moment. Chenner has mentioned this. A smile graced Empress Dowager Lan's lips. In life or death situations, the handling of affairs would inevitably differ from that of other types of circumstances. Chen'er was very fortunate to have little Chi accompanying him during those times. Emperor, what do you think? The emperor shifted his gaze to Chi Yunruo. The he nodded. Looking at Chi Yunruo as well, Empress Dowager Lan said, Furthermore, one glance, and it is clear that he is a bright and sensitive child that he is not a cunning person. This grieving one feels reassured having such a person by Chenner's side. The emperor swept his gaze through the piles of memorials. Empress Dowager Lan waved without a care. Some people have a lot of free time. AI, it's precisely because Chenner has no shortcomings when it comes to official business that these people try their best to grab onto Chenner's personal matters. They neglect the important matters of the state yet always think up every possible method to pry into the family matters of the imperial clan members and imperial princes. Emperor, is there really nothing important for the court to attend to? Chi Yunruo recalled the great scholar Wen who had been immensely proud of himself just a while ago. And he held back from breaking into a laugh. Held back really hard. But Empress Dowager Lan glanced at him and said, Do you agree? Naturally. Chi Yunruo didn't dare to respond. In a helpless manner, the emperor said, Imperial Mother, it's because Chen'er did not conduct himself properly. Did not conduct himself properly? Did Chen'er burn down the imperial ancestral shrine, or did he kill faithful officials? The last time Chen'er was wronged, you only bestowed him money and valuables. AI, and now, it is this child being wronged. The Empress Dowager looked at the Emperor. Frightened, Chi Yunruo stared at her with wide eyes. Yet Empress Dowager Lan merely smiled and said to the Emperor, although it's a boy, he can still be considered a member of the Imperial Clan. As a grandmother, this grieving one has some good things to bestow him. So, Emperor mustn't be stingy. 
The emperor sighed helplessly, before shouting, Huang Ling. This slave is here. Bestow Adjutant Chi a pair of jade ruyas and a long neck vase with a plum blossom pattern made from the government level porcelain kills. The emperor looked at his mother's expression, before adding, Declare our decree, an exception will be made. Adjutant Chi from Prince Chun's estate will be promoted to the proper fifth rank. Satisfied, Empress Dowager Lan smiled. After Chi Yunruo had kneeled and given thanks for the favor, Empress Dowager Lan said, This grieving one still has something to say to this child. Emperor still has government affairs to attend to, so this grieving one will bring this child to the Palace of Merciful Peace first. Sun respectfully sends off Imperial Mother. Empress Dowager Lan waved, hinting that she did not need an escort. She slowly made for the exit with Chi Yunruo's support. End chapter